Hey, 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 my friends. Y'all, after a week of traveling for Under the Big Top and then the Central California's Women, Women's Conference, like, I'm back. Ah! Um, and I have to tell you that there were so many great little nuggets, ahas, um, from the last week. And so on this week's episode, I really wanted to share with you some of my personal ahas um, and nuggets from Brooke Shields' keynotes. Um, speech at the Central California Women's Conference. Um, the theme was Believing in Your Voice. And I thought, oh, this really resonated with me. And I think with so many studio owners, what they're going through right now at this time of year. And so really, how are we going to stay firm in holding our vision for ourselves and also for our business. And so if you're joining me, say, hey, Erin, what's up? Let me know that you're here. I always love to know who's with me when we come on these lives. And if you're coming back in on the replay, I want to know that as well. Just drop a little hashtag replay. Let me know because this, I want this to be a conversation. I really, I, I really um, want it to be where we are leaning in together and really, you know, diving into this topic. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. And if you've stumbled upon this somehow, I'm Aaron Bird. Hey. Uh, I work with dance studio owners and educators to really grow their businesses without the burnout, the overwhelm, or the sacrificing of their personal lives. Because the truth is you actually don't have to, right? You don't have to. Hello. Good morning. Uh, so my friends, first of all, before I even like dive into all of the, the things, did y'all know that it is National Coffee Day? And I posted <laughs> that, honestly, I didn't drink coffee until two years ago when my doctor suggested that I um, that I actually added it to the, to the mix of my daily regimen. Um, so any other like new or non-coffee drinkers here on our on National Coffee Day? I always want to know. Let me know in the comments. Um, but now, yeah, it's... I. I'm going to give you my recipe here. It is just two shots of espresso with a um, premier protein peanut butter drink mixed in. So I get my protein drink and my espresso or coffee um, all together in the morning. I don't know if you cared to know that or not, but I've shared it. Anywho. Okay. So let's dive right in to why we're really here today talking about believing in your voice. And, you know, I have to tell you, first of all, that what I heard while I was in Atlanta at Under the Big Top with over 80 um, studio owners and dance teachers is that right now, so many studio owners are, are struggling with Honestly, they're struggling with the idea of like, how do I hold firm to my vision, my beliefs, when I have people who it feels like they're constantly judging me, they're constantly questioning why I do what I do, or, you know, their kid didn't get put in this group, or, you know, um, we've start, we just barely started choreographing, and I have parents who are upset that their child is in the second row and not the first row. And we haven't even done formation changes yet, right? Like what I, what we were listening to was that so many studio owners were struggling with um, feeling like they are okay with their voice and like really standing proud and like, this is who I am. This is my value. This is what I know that I bring to the table. And they struggle with the... The fact of how do you stay firm in that and have those boundaries, have the um, the wherewithal to really be okay with, hey, not everyone's a good fit or, hey, this is the way that I do things. And if you don't like it, the door is right over there. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that's always the answer, my friends. But what I'm saying is that we have to really believe so strongly in our own vision, right? And our voice and what we bring to this world that we don't falter when you have those people 
who question it, right? So I, I wanna dive into some nuggets, but right now as you're joining me, have you guys ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like you had to maybe veer from your mission or your vision to either please and keep your clients or that you needed to do something different because that's what everybody else in your community was doing. Maybe you felt like you needed a competitive team because all the other studios were doing it and you had one or two students who left. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have to do a comp team because everyone's going to leave because that one person left and said, you know, they needed more. Have you ever felt that way? I have. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm the first to tell you, like, I have felt that way. Right? Yes. But, but what happens every time I do that, I'm doing that out of scarcity. I'm doing that out of lack. I'm doing that from a, a place honestly of lack and really not of abundance and growth. I, when we make those decisions and we veer from our mission, we're actually like making things worse for ourselves in that moment because we're not in alignment with who we want to be. Who do we want to show up as? Right? And so one of the things that when Brooke Shields was giving her keynote at the Central California Women's Conference. Um, Y'all know who Brooke Shields is, right? <laughs> I hope so. Um, and one of the things that really kind of hit home um, was that she talked about how her mom was kind of hated in the industry because her mom was that protector. Her mom wasn't going to, you know, she was her manager and all of that. And her mom was really protective um, of, of her. And she wasn't going to allow Hollywood for her to, for, you know, to do certain things, to, to not allow her to be a child and to go to a regular school and to do all those things. Like she made the decision as her mom, like I'm going to protect her. And what resonated with me there was that she started to talk about like, how do you build a career and still hold firm in your values? Because, you know, how many times do we see in Hollywood, in the industry where people are so, you know, desperate for the next gig or are so... Um, need their break or all those things that they they maybe do some things that they wouldn't normally do or they allow people to treat them in a way that they nor know isn't great but they're coming from a place of like I just this is what I have to do and as she was talking about and telling these stories what really hit home for me was was really bringing it back to us as business owners, do we, do we bend, do we cave out of fear or out of this idea of like, if I don't do what I want to do, then, um, or what they want me to do, then everyone's going to leave. And the truth is, no, if we stand and we believe in our own ver voice, we believe in our values and our vision of what we want, what type of community we're building, what type of um, experience that we want for our clients and for, for us, if we can stand firm in that, we will keep the right people. The ones who don't align with the, us, they will leave and they're supposed to leave. We don't want to keep people in our circle who don't want to be there, who don't love what we're doing. And this, this is not just for our business. This is for our personal life. Like, here's the thing. You might have family, and I say that with air quotes, but you might have family who don't support what you do, who don't see the value in what you do, who... 
Oh, you get to go play with kids all day. Isn't that great? Oh, what a fun hop. Like, isn't that just so fun? What's your real job, right? No, hell no. I get fired up. I'm sorry about this topic. And I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble here on my stream for saying a bad word. But, <laughs> but my friends, if you have people in your circle, whether it is your students, parents, family members who aren't in alignment with you and who you want to be and are rising and lifting you up, then they need to be kicked out of the circle. They need to be kicked out of the circle because they're only bringing you down, y'all. Right? Oh, yes. Okay, I know, Michelle. Like, it's true. We hear it so many times. And what I, what Michelle was sharing was that she had families that trusted her and her judgment on how she ran her, her business for so many years. Um, now, what I will tell you is, Michelle, that is because you were firm in your beliefs. You were firm in your vision. You were firm in how um, you were showing up, right? And so my friend, like it is not on accident. You created a culture that supported that in your studio. But so many times when a studio owner is um, wavering in their belief system, right? Or wavering in like the struggle, the internal struggle of, if I don't do this, then that will happen, right? If I don't let that parent, or if I don't let that kid have a solo, they're going to leave and go to another studio that will. Even though your rules say they can't have a solo if they're not in teams, right? But a parent might say, well, if you don't give a solo, we're going to go down the street. Go. Because guess what? What you allow will continue. And if that parent sees that they can get their way, they will continue to do that. And then that spreads like wildfire in your studio. And you become really resentful of your studio. You get resentful of your families and your parents. And you shouldn't be. You should absolutely love your families that are and students that are coming into your space, into your world. You should love them, right? We should be grateful for them. And we should, um, you know, feel like, oh my gosh, they've allowed us to be on this journey. Okay. So if you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. I don't know who I want to be like. And that's okay right now. Every season of life, we have different wants and desires and who we want to be. And, and who you were in business at year one is probably very, very different than who you are in business year 30. We change and we should. We grow, right? Our business will grow if we grow. So... If I'm not saying you don't have a vision, like y'all, you should have a vision for your business. You should have a vision, whether it's for two, in two years, this is where I want to be. And, you know, I want to, what is it that you want to create? What's the experience? What's the impact that you want to make on your community? Like all of these are layers to, to really believing in your voice. Who are you? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as? for yourself and for your community. That's our voice. That's how we're like, our voice is who we're being and who we're showing up as. That's what makes you a unicorn in the field of donkeys. Okay. We have to be so steadfast in our values and in who we are that we are unwavering when those parents come in like, yes, it sucks. You're going to have those times where, you know, 
you've got a kid who's entitled and feels like, well, because I'm a senior, I should automatically da, 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 da. And you're like, no, there's, we don't do seniority necessarily around here. We, maybe we base our, our decisions off of merit, not just because you've been here for a long time. Right. But again, you have to decide what do you value? And so my question for you today, my friends, is do you know what your top five values are as a business and as a person? What are your five values? And if you have not put pen to paper and gotten super clear on what those five values are, that's your homework for today. <laughs> because once you are clear with those values and who you are and who you want to show up as, number one, it makes it super clear to convey that to your community to help you attract the right people. And B, it makes decision making super easy because when you have a problem or a situation that comes to you and you're thinking about it, and you're like, mm, how do I deal with this? And, it's, and the question is, does it, if I do this, in response to this, does it align with my values? And if the answer is no, it doesn't align with your values, then you know what to do. And on the flip side, if it does, and you're like, yes, it, it aligns with my values, then you also know what to do. You know you're making the right or the best decision possible. But it all starts with knowing who are we? And how are we showing up and believing in us and, and what we have to give? Yeah. Okay. One of the other things that I was thinking about the other day is, um, is that I don't know if you've ever heard the Chinese proverb, the tongue can paint what the eyes can't see. The tongue can paint what the eyes can't see. And the reason I'm bringing up that Chinese proverb is this, is that, yes, we show up and we have to embody who we want to be. We want the experience inside of our studios to not only visually paint the picture, but our voice has to be a straight line, not only for us and how we're speaking into our students and our staff, but how then are our staff and our teachers speaking into our culture, okay? So our voice, our vision, our culture, our values, they can't just come from me and stop there and my teachers and my staff you know, are saying something completely different. Words matter. And so that's why it's so important for us to be so strong in our values, conveying those with our staff, everybody living and breathing our culture, that everyone is singing the same song and speaking basically the same words. So we're painting a picture. It's another layer of who we want to be. And our voice is heard, even if I'm not there. So my friends, even though I'm not in the classroom, guess what? My voice as the leader is so strong that my vision is still conveyed in every single classroom. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let me know your thoughts. I want to know your thoughts. This is conversation. Okay. So do you have your five, like pen to paper, they are written out your five core values for your business. Do you have those? If not, it's okay. Right. But we know that we need to make that a priority. We need to make it a priority. Because if you don't really know who you be, how are 
is anyone else going to know who you are and what makes you different or what makes you the one that they should choose? So do you have your five core values laid out? And if you need help with that, let me know. It was actually um, the topic, one of the main topics of our first call in the Studio Accelerator Bootcamp um, that we went through with our members um, because it is the key for us to get clear when it comes to attracting and enrolling the right people, getting clear in our marketing message. And um, so do you have those? Right. And so that was the first one of the first things that we dove into in the Studio Accelerator Bootcamp this week. And because it was week one. Now, I had a couple of people reach out and ask me, like, Aaron, is this, you know, is it too late for the Studio Accelerator Bootcamp? It is not too late. Um, every single session that we have is available on replay. So if you missed week one, that is absolutely OK. Um, you can go back into the replay. We have a private Facebook group where everybody asks questions, um, shares. Right now, they're sharing what those five values are. So we can kind of go through them and tell them, OK, like, well, what were you thinking with this? And really helping them get super crystal clear and concise on those five values. But there is still time, y'all, if you wanted to join us in the Studio Accelerator Bootcamp. Um, you still have time. It is our 10 week program and it really focuses on lead generation, marketing and visibility plans and how to get crystal clear so we can attract the right people into our camp and um, enroll those students like it is it's an accelerator. So if you if one of your big goals right now for this last quarter of the year, October, November, December in quarter four, if more students is your big goal then y'all, you want to come to and be part of the Studio Accelerator Bootcamp. If you have questions about that, drop the word bootcamp below and I will reach out to you and we can have a conversation about if it's the right fit for you or not based upon your unique goals. Um, that's something that's important to me is that we are talking about what is it that you really want and I'm the first person to tell you, oh no, this isn't a good fit for you. What would be better for you is X, Y, Z. Or, hey, you know what? What you're looking for, um, I might not be the right fit for, but I can probably point you in the right direction. I've had people come to me and say, Aaron, do you have a curriculum you can sell? And I'm like, we have our own curriculum. I just don't sell it. Um, so if you want a curriculum, let me point you in the right direction based upon what your needs, your objective, and your intention is for having a new curriculum. So I am the first person to tell you I am not the end all be all and I might not be the right fit. Just like you will not be the right fit for everybody who walks in the door. So more information about that, just drop the word bootcamp below and you and I will have a conversation about if it's the right fit for you. All right, my friends. So under the big talk, can I tell you that I had such an amazing time in Atlanta with like my gal pals, first of all, um, you know, the, Miss Julie Kay and Terry and and Becca and Jessica and like, oh my gosh, y'all like, and, oh, Stacy Morgan from Australia. I can't forget Miss Stacy Morgan. Um, y'all, first of all, the faculty was total rock star faculty. And even as I wasn't teaching and I was able to sit back and support um, my fellow faculty teammates, um, I was able to grab some nuggets. And, and I have to tell you that I am a firm believer in we should always be learning. We are never too old to learn something new, right? And so can I tell you how much fun I had in some of these sessions, just like sitting back and watching and like, and being able to firsthand even capture, I think I have some photos that I can share with you guys. Um, but being able to literally capture joy happening in the classroom for the studio owners and teachers. And it reminded me the line of like being able to soak in the joy that our students are having as well. And if they're not having those moments of joy that you can really see, we need to really reevaluate what we're doing. Every class, there has to be that moment of <gasps> joy, excitement, huh, deep thinking, 
right? We should have those moments inside of our classrooms. Yes, there's going to be concentration, determination, like, right? We, we might see those on, on our students' faces. And it doesn't matter if they're three or if they're 103. We should be able to see and to feel and to know what is happening. And can I tell you that the vibe at Under the Big Top was like exceptional. It was so good. And I can say that um, whether it was me sharing on outside of the box props, <laughs> where I had some people in our industry who um, were like, oh my gosh, game changer, Aaron. I actually already have this particular thing, but I never thought of using it in this way. Or, oh, I've never seen this before. I'm used to using scarves and the, um, you know, bean bags and hula hoops and all of like, and those are great props and we use all of those props in our classes. But I want us to think about props in a different way. I want us to get outside that box and think about like, how are we going to use these things? And so we had some moments of that where like afterwards they're like, I never even thought of that. Like, this is so good. Or I've had, I have people who came to me and said, I was not a prop believer. I thought that they were annoying, that they were, you know, not, they were fluffy. Right. Um, and now I'm looking at them from a different way. Thank you, Nikki. Nikki, did you like me wearing my son, uh, my snowflake costume? I have no shame. I don't care what I look like. And y'all, you shouldn't either inside those classrooms. Like, let's make it fun. Who cares? Um, because we're showing our students that like, it doesn't matter. Like, just do the funny thing. Um, but anywho, like, so being able to, to show people how to do that. And then inside the business side, um, I had even some aha moments and some takeaways some from some of my friends about like, you know, I've been thinking about that and maybe it's time to reevaluate that or, um, you know, like just little nuggets because here's the thing we're, um, the snowflake was the best. It really was the best. I loved it. <laughs> I think everybody loved it. Um, but you know, I think that so many times we, we kind of, we have our blinders on, we get so in the zone and in the doing of all of the things that even though back here in our minds, we like, we know something, we don't actually implement or take action on it. Or we're like, oh, I don't know if that'll work for me. And that's a story. That's a feeling, not necessarily a fact if we haven't tried. Right? So I think that it's so great. Oh, well, thank you. You were so cute too. Um, I love seeing you, Nikki, there. I absolutely love seeing you there. It was so great um, because I hadn't seen you in person in, in such a while. So it was great to reconnect with some cl past clients who maybe come, came to one of my other past events. Um, and it was great to see clients who have worked in the past. New, I mean, like, it's just so great. You see old friends, new friends. Um, and it's just so, it's so great. And my friends, this is why I'm really a firm believer in coming to live events, whether it's summer conferences, these, you know, I call them mini workshops or mini, you know, like weekend things like under the big top, um, the 100K blueprint workshop that I call it kind of like a mini conference or a mini workshop. I'm um, coming to those sort of things, really being able to be there because not only do you get to learn, but you get to connect with other people who understand you and who are in the same boat as you and who love what you love, right? Um, so it was so, so good. And so last little nugget is this, my friends. There is still one room left for the retreat in Ireland. Um, and what I could tell you is this. Um, if, you know, I believe in a little bit of magic, right? Do you believe in magic? And here's the thing. I know that Ireland is going to be magical. And the reason it's going to be magical is because we are going to take and create this safe space that allows us to reconnect from disconnecting. We're going to disconnect from our daily, 
right? From all the things that we have to do to reconnect to our business, to reconnect to that voice and that vision of who we want to be and to get crystal clear on that while we're there together to craft our plan of how we get to our goals, how we market our business, how we are showing up and what it is that we really want and how do we get there, right? And it's going to be magical because it's going to be paired with taking action and implementing while we are together. And I am a, I've got a passport, we'll travel. Um, if you're that person too, let me know in the comments below because then you're my people. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I have a passport. You just tell me when I'm ready to go. I've got a go bag. I'm ready to go, my friends. Um, but really, like, it is uh, going to be a very different experience than any, you know, typical conference, um, mini workshop that you've ever been to because we are going to pair learning. We're going to pair uh, rest and relaxation because y'all, we don't get enough of it. I don't care who you are. We don't get enough of rest and relaxation. So we're going to have that. And then we're going to have exploration and adventure. And we have um, excursions and surprises planned for everybody. And it's, you know, Jennifer Randall and I, um, and our, I teamed up because we wanted to create something that was simply magical for y'all. And so if you want more information about the retreat, um, and some options that are available for you that aren't actually listed on, um, the website, let me know, drop the word retreat below. We can have a conversation, but what I'm going to tell you is this, um, that so many times we tell us that, oh, I just can't, you know, I can't make it work right now or, oh, I've got this or that or whatever happening. And what I know is life is short and we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, two months, three months, a year, two years from now. And if you know in your heart that you want some support, some real deep support, you want time away to get clarity you, you need that and you need the support and you need people walking with you hand in hand. And this is the place for you. Um, and if you know, I have one person who's like, heck, I just, I really want to, I want to travel and I want to, um, I believe that I'm taking that opportunity to travel and to see the world, to see my, my studio through a different lens and the bigger impact that it can make. I believe travel opens up our eyes to all that's possible and gets us really clear on who we are and who we want to be when we can get outside of our own little bubble. So my friends, okay, to recap real quick, I'm going to hide this. I am. I'm going to hide this. So this week was an amazing week of connection and community and ahas and nuggets, not only from being able to be on faculty at Under the Big Top and share with dance studio owners and educators from all over um, who came to join us to really, for one purpose, to be better educators, to be better leaders, to show up and to, to be committed to being lifelong learners, because that way we can continue to grow. And then I was able to come back home and dive right into um, getting out there and sharing with our community what we do at the Central California Women's Conference and be able to, to listen to our community and to talk to, um, you know, honestly, badass women in our community who are leaders and who are showing up and then being able to sit there and kind of listen to Brooke Shields and her keynote and about the 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 belief, really believing in your voice and who you are and the value that you bring. You can't, you, you matter and you're worth it and your value, it, it cannot be replaced. It can't be replaced by anybody else. Nobody else is the same as you. And so you have to believe in who you are and not give a bleep about what other people right? Like I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea and neither should you be. And that's okay. It was a week of inspiration. And my hope is that 
for you when you show up here with me every single week live that you leave maybe feeling a little bit inspired, feel supported and know that we are here to support you and that me and my team, when we talk about the things that we're going to do um, and that we create, whether it's the Studio Accelerator Bootcamp, the Dance Studio Owner Business Retreat, we are really creating them with you in mind and looking at how can we support you in a way that meets you where you are and, and with your goals in mind and that we listen and that we are really trying to come up with solutions that are going to fit and serve you and not really looking at it from a cookie cutter approach, but how can we serve you and meet you where you're at? And that is my hope. And my hope is that you just find joy here and that you know that, you know, there's someone here with you to walk on this path because that's really our main goal is that we want to be here to support you. And so I'm going to leave you there for this week in the this episode of the Aaron Bird Live Show where we talked about believing in your voice, all the nuggets, the ahas, and the takeaways. And I will see you next week for another episode of the Aaron Bird Live Show where we're going to actually dive into deeper we're going to dive into strategies, tips, tactics, all the things on embracing the power of no and how no is a complete sentence. Hmm. So we're going to dive into that next week. I hope you will join me same time, same place for another episode of the Aaron Bird Live Show. I'll see you later, my friends. Bye.